As we roll into the holiday season, HP has followed the lead of other Chromebook manufacturers in releasing the same device, but just changing it up a little bit in order to give themselves a lot more of a broad price range. And in doing so, they've created a little bit of consumer confusion, we think. And so we want to clear up exactly what's going on with HP's Chromebook X360 line. But before we get into all that, today's video is brought to you by Hostinger, and they provide web hosting that's not only easy to set up, but easy to maintain and manage as well. Even better, their prices are nearly impossible to beat, with hosting plans starting as low as 80 cents per month. We use their simple and intuitive H panel to get a new site up and running with their six step WordPress install and love the access to 24 7, 365 support for the few questions and issues we had along the way. Even more exciting is Hostinger's upcoming move to Google Cloud. With this shift, Users will get all the benefits of hosting or simple and intuitive H panel combined with the power, scale, and flexibility of Google's cloud and back end. No need for professional setup, no need to hire a developer, it all just works. If you'd like to learn more about how to supercharge your hosting experience and in all likelihood, save yourself some money, go to hostinger.com forward slash Chrome Unbox to get started and use the code Chrome Unbox to receive 91% off yearly web hosting plans. In front of me, I have two devices, both called, if you go to look them up online, the HP Chromebook X360, and both of these are very, very different devices with different users in mind, with varying price points, and these aren't the only ones that HP has out branded as HP Chromebook X360s. This first one is a new version of the X360 from last year that HP has released, and we are only finding it at Best Buy right now, but it's a carbon copy of the original version we loved from last year. And we're gonna link the original review of this device because our attitude towards it hasn't really changed since last year, but this is nothing different except for the color. So the keyboard deck has got this nice kind of like champagne gold color. Love the way it looks, but it's not really a new device. It's just kind of the same device with the paint job. Over here, we have the X360 that is a completely different device, but you really wouldn't know it from looking at it. This particular device can be had at Best Buy. It can be had on HP's website. We've seen versions of it at Costco and at Target so far. I'm sure Walmart will probably carry it and who knows whoever else. And so what could happen is as you go to look for a device, you find an HP Chromebook X360 that's like $300 or $320 and you think I'm buying this exact same device that I've seen reviewed by other reviewers like us here at Chrome Unboxed. And the truth is it's not quite that simple. The first telltale giveaway is that on the inside of the cheaper Celeron and or Pentium based models, you have a white keyboard and kind of this silver colored keyboard deck. So the color can kind of give it away. The champagne gold and the dark blue ones, those are the Core i3, high-end $600 MSRP HB Chromebook X360. Now these other variations are powered by either a Celeron N4000, so like the Gemini Lake processor, or a Pentium N5000, still in that Gemini Lake line, but just kind of a bump in performance. And they range anywhere from what we're seeing right now from about 300 all the way up to like $550. We're gonna talk about some of the price issues there here in just a second. But inside, you're getting a processor that does pretty well. And for a $300 machine, I think most people are gonna be extremely happy. And I'm, I'm happy that Gemini Lake processors, as opposed to the Apollo Lake ones from last year, are pretty quick and pretty speedy and they get around just fine. But you need to know it's not the Core i3 that is kind of a beast in the X360 that was around last year with all those other devices like the Dell Inspiron and stuff like that. It is not that processor. This one doesn't require fans, but it also is quite a bit less power. Additionally, the X360 from last year came with eight gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. That was the way it was sold. These devices with their different chipsets also come in different variations of RAM and storage. So we've got some that have four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of storage, four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of storage. There's one at Costco right now that has eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage paired up with the N5000 processor. So we're seeing these in all kinds of different variations. So when you go to look at one of these, if you see the white keyboard or you see the silver deck on the X360 14, you need to realize that that device has a lower end processor in it, and you need to pay attention to what it's paired with because if you're getting the expectation that you're gonna get eight gigs of RAM and 64 or 128 gigs of internal storage, you need to realize you've gotta look at the tech specs, especially if that price is a little bit lower, and realize what it is you're actually buying. For instance, with this device right here, we actually bought this one at Target for $320, and when we got it in and I unboxed it, it was really cool to feel that 
basically all the external parts here feel exactly like the more expensive Core i3 model. It's got the same anodized aluminum lid, glass over the display, aluminum keyboard deck, and a plastic bottom, just like this one does. And it looks good. The keyboard feels like the same keyframe. The, the trackpad feels basically the same. It's not glass on the cheaper models, but it's a nice surface. It feels similar to the 15 inch uh, one with the uh, keypad over here on the side that HP put out not long ago. So it's very good. Lots of good external pieces. Save the screen. It's a 1366 by 768 panel at 14 inches. Kind of looks pixelated. Viewing angles are terrible and it's not very bright. So that's the place where they obviously save some money here in addition to the internals. The internals clearly are going to be cheaper than what you're getting with the i3. But overall, $320 for this package isn't that bad. I mean, it's not a bad Chromebook. You just, again, need to know what it is you're purchasing. Now, some of that will change as you bump up the prices and find it at different places. So if you look at the spec sheet, again, please look at the spec sheet if you're going to buy this device and see what's inside of it. But if you find one with a 1080p screen, it likely is going to be the exact same 1080p screen you get on the Core i3 one, which is to say not the brightest screen in the world, but good colors, great viewing angles, and all that kind of stuff. So if you find one of these that's 1080p, you're going to be bumping it into the four, $450 range, and that creates some issues as well that we're going to kind of talk about here in the wrap-up. But I can't stress this enough. When you're looking at the HP Chromebook X360, look at the spec sheet. Regardless of where you're buying it from, regardless of what it looks like in the pictures, regardless of what you think it might be, go look at the spec sheet. Look for the resolution on the screen, look for the internals, look for the RAM, and look for the storage before you go hitting that buy button. So at the end of videos like these, I'm supposed to tell you what it is you need to go buy. Well, there are a couple of problems with that. One is the market is super volatile all the time. And especially at, as we're filming this, we're coming into the holiday season. So there's no way for me to tell you exactly what prices these are going to be. MSRP, the Core i3 models, $599. But MSRP, the Celeron and Pentium versions range anywhere from $300 to $550. What I can tell you is, as we're filming this right now, the price difference between the entry-level model in the Celeron and the top-end model in the Core i3 version is only 30 bucks. We actually went and purchased both of these devices, one from Target, so the Celeron one came from Target for 320. The i3 model with the champagne gold finish came from Best Buy for 350. So at $30 between the two, there is no way anyone could ever say that you should go buy the Pentium or Celeron version of this Chromebook versus the Core i3 model. However, we have to talk MSRP and at MSRP without any deals or sales, and we got to think through this because prices are volatile, it's the holiday season, there's all kinds of ups and downs. You walk into the store, you get online to go and you're ready to buy it today. I can't exactly tell you what prices are going to be, but there's a chance that the Core i3 model might be as much as $250 to $300 more than the base model Celeron. And if you're just trying to buy something to kick around the house and you're not that concerned about the screen being the best or having a glass trackpad or having the best performance, absolutely go save yourself a couple hundred dollars and get the Celeron model. But what you need to know is you need to know what the stats are, the specs are of the device, and then you need to go and comparison shop this thing every time you even think about buying it because the i3 model comes down in price in the $350 to $400 range on a regular basis. And I don't think it will be a strange thing for us over the course of the next six to 12 months to see it constantly down around $400. And at that price point, None of the Celeron or Pentium models make any sense to ever go by. And unfortunately, I think HP's just introduced a lot of confusion into the market, and hopefully we've helped to clear some of that up for you. But that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, and this has helped you make a purchasing decision in any way, give us a thumbs up, go down there and hit subscribe, and make sure and hit the notification bell so you can be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Till next time, we'll see you.